Hello, Creality peeps. I'm standing here next to the Creality K2 Plus with the included CFS, making this the K2 Plus combo. Behold, before me sits the standalone individual Creality CFS. We are going to unbox this unit to see what it's all about and then install it as a second CFS on the K2 Plus. Let's see how this bad boy is packed. The first thing we got is a manual and some stickers. You are then going to be very careful because right here on top, under that tiny piece of foam, is your buffer. Those of you with the K2 combo already have the buffer. It's nice of them to provide another one. Reach into the box and pull out this bag of cables and hoses. Reach into the box and remove that piece of foam. Reach into the box. And remove your Creality CFS. It is nicely protected by a couple of large pieces of foam. And then individually wrapped inside a plastic bag. Let's get it out of that bag. There it is. It is a very nice looking piece of kit. Slide these two tabs back and pop your lid open. Inside there you will find something you're not expecting. And that is an air blower bulb. This is the kind of bulb you would use to blow debris off a sensor in a digital camera. And one's been included with our CFS. Before moving on, don't forget to open up both of these compartments. Mine are quite stiff. I used a small tool. Inside those compartments, you'll find two desiccant packs. Take them out of the bag and put them back in the compartment. Put the covers back on. So here we are looking at the rear of the K2 Plus. Here is CFS number two, and here is CFS number one. We will need to connect PTFE from this CFS to this hub, and of course, power and data connectivity from the K2 Plus to the CFS. We'll start by removing the cable from the K2 Plus. This cable connects to our first CFS. We will instead connect that cable to our second CFS. There are two ports on the CFS. Pick the one that works best for you. You will then take the 1.5 meter cable and connect the CFS to the machine. Once you connect these cables, you've created a data and power network between the K2 Plus, CFS1, and CFS2. Open up this bag and take out a long PTFE tube. One side of that PTFE tube will go in the rear of your CFS. Do not pull test it, place it in and leave it be. The other end simply plugs in to an available port on your buffer. Again, do not pull test it. You can break the little teeth on those couplers. You can and should clip this to a more appropriate length. Now, let's say you'd like to move CFS number one to the side of the printer as well. You would need a longer piece of Bowden tube, the 100 centimeter cable that came with your second CFS. I do not have a system in place to shelve two CFSs on the same side. So for demonstration purposes, we will put the second one right there on the other side of the K2 Plus. To do this, remove the short cable connection between the buffer and the CFS. Remove the Bowden tube from the back of the CFS. Remove the Bowden tube from the buffer. As a reminder, depress the ring fully to unlock the teeth before removing the tube as a precaution to prevent accidentally stretching and breaking this cable, remove the cable, 
then move CFS number two with CFS number two down, you can replace that connection between the two CFS units. Remember that fun 100 centimeter cable? It will now reach between the CFS and the main connection on the buffer. We have now recreated our power and data network between the K2 Plus and two side mounted CFS units. Grab that longer piece of PTFE tubing and press it into the coupler on the CFS. Take the other end and press it into the coupler on the buffer. You now have a complete filament network between two side mounted CFS units. Go ahead and trim both PTFE tubes to a reasonable length in order to create a less stressful path from the CFS to the printer for your filament. And here we are with the K2 Plus and two side mounted CFS units. Let's go ahead and turn the machine on to be sure it recognizes both CFS. So is it CFS or CFS or is it multiple CFS or is it CFSs? Two CFSs or two CFS or two CFSs? Let's turn on the CFS. -ses. With the machine turned on, your CFS should the says should begin blinking with red dots cycling through all four slots and numbers should appear on your screen. This should happen on both your CFS says here at the main screen. We will touch the hamburger. We will touch the filament button and you will see you now have two CFS says this one will show that it's empty. This one will show that it has colors. Let's go ahead and load some filament into the other CFS. I'm going to pop in some RFID hyper white bamboo green PLA. Keep in mind your CFS will have an easier time loading and unloading with the lid closed. RFID red hyper eSun bone white PLA plus. Here you can see we are on CFS number two. I noticed it still thinks there's something on the spool holder. There is not. So I will touch that, touch the pen, touch reset and press OK. Now you'll see the spool holder is blank again. You'll see it detected the RFID white and the RFID red. However, 2B and 2D are blank because there is no RFID chip. We'll touch the pencil. We'll choose brand generic PLA generic PLA and next to color we'll touch the pencil and choose green and press OK. Now our bamboo green is showing over here. We'll do the same thing. We'll just choose generic generic PLA is fine. We'll choose the color and it's bone white. You'll see only the basic colors are here. We'll choose the closest one to it. I'll choose this orangish color and press OK. And there you have it. There's representation for all four colors in CFS number two and all four colors in CFS number one. Now that we are done here, you may press home and you're ready to print with eight colors. Let's send a test print to the K2 Plus to see how it works. All right, I'm here in Creality Print 6. Bring your mouse up to the top and look for this tab device. Inside device, you should see your K2 Plus. If you don't, go ahead and add it by pressing Scan Add. Here is my K2 Plus. I will go ahead and press the plus button. Press X to close and you'll see the K2 Plus has appeared.
Here on this screen, click into the Details button. We are now looking at a simplified version of Fluid. And here on the right side are your CFS units. This is CFS number one, labeled slot number 1A, 1B, 1C, and 1D. And here is CFS number two, labeled slot 2A, 2B, 2C, and 2D. Notice on this screen, you can see the humidity level inside each CFS. While on this screen, we can make some changes to the CFS settings behavior by clicking on the globe right here. With this slider on, the machine will automatically read the RFID on filament when installed. With this slider on, the machine will read all four slots upon powering on the machine. If you'd rather leave it as B, go ahead and turn it off. Keep in mind, if you changed filaments with the machine off, it will not read them. You'd have to remove the filament and reinsert it into the feeder. With automatic feeding system turned on, should the machine run out of filament while printing, it will switch to the next available spool of the same filament. You will want two of the same filament in two slots or to at least convince the machine that both rolls of filament are the same. If you are confused about any of these features, you may click the guide button and Creality will load up a wiki page. At the time of this video, the wiki is asking me to log in and the login is not working. However, we can just delete the login portion of the link, press enter, and the wiki will load properly. This is a minor redirect issue that they will hopefully correct rather quickly. With that, you are ready to print with all eight colors. I am going to drag this model onto the bed. The next thing I'm going to do is make this a little bit bigger because the K2 Plus is so huge. Let's go 115%. You will see Creality Print is showing CFS1 and CFS2, as well as the external spool holder. Don't be confused by the external spool holder. Despite seeing all eight filaments, you still need to bring filaments into this project. In order to bring all eight of these filaments into this project, highlight your mouse right here and press Auto Mapping. You will see all eight filaments have populated this project. We will now paint them onto this test. Click the model and click this paint symbol or press the N key. We have eight total colors. The entire model is filament number one. So we will leave this base like that. I will then switch to the fill button and choose filament number two, now highlighted in green, that is blue. I will paint this blue and I will paint this blue. This prevents having to change colors multiple times per layer. We will move on to number three. I will change this to number three. We'll move on to number four. I'll paint this number four, five, six, seven, and eight. We have now painted this model, all eight colors. We will now slice and send this model to our K2 Plus. I am going to use a low infill to help keep this thing moving along. I am going to slow things down in order to help increase my chances of success and a nice clean print. I am going to slow my first layer and first layer infill down. And we are going to go ahead and press slice plate. You can send this print to Creality Cloud, which is how I typically print, or we can send it direct to the printer by pressing send print. 
Here we are looking at the launch pad of this project. This is showing you the printer. Here is a camera view of the printer. This is the model we are sending. This is the estimated length of time it will take to print. And here are the colors that you have assigned. You will see all of them match and I will go ahead and press start print. Go ahead and press OK. And off we go. I'll be back in about one hour and we'll see how this went. And there it is, eight color perfection. It looks absolutely fantastic. All eight colors, clean, no color bleed, very smooth transitions, looks really great, very happy. If everything went well, you should be able to print glorious eight colors with two fully stacked CFS units on your Crowley K2 Plus. I'm Great Adventure, and you're on 3D Rundown.